so this question has no middle ground. It's either incredibly fucking easy for you, okay, just instantly you know the answer, you don't even need to read it, or you're like, what the fuck? As I said, there's no middle ground. So this is a spot diagnosis that you will see on USMLE, okay? I have to reiterate that when I make questions like this, this isn't my opinion. This isn't about what I arbitrarily believe should be on the exam. This is literally a high yield image that shows up all over the USMLE, okay? This is pityriasis rosea, okay? If you haven't heard of it before, as I said, you're like, what the fuck? Pityriasis rosea, you can see that there's a larger ellipse here. This is called a herald patch. The rash will actually start as this herald patch, a one to two to three centimeter pinkish ellipse, okay? And it's usually on the back or the torso. It doesn't have to be, but it usually is. And after the appearance of this herald patch, within about a week, there's going to be a maculopapular rash that will spread outwardly from the herald patch. It tends to, if it's on the back or the torso, tends to ascend and onto the shoulder blades, causing what's referred to colloquially as a classic Christmas tree like appearance or rash. So those are kind of a those are buzzy terms. You have herald patch, your initial ellipse that the pityriasis rosea rash starts from, and then you get a Christmas tree distribution, a Christmas tree rash as it ascends onto the shoulder blades. This is a spot diagnosis, okay? You you have this conspicuous larger ellipse here with a maculopapular rash, pityriasis rosea high yield, okay? Now, this is caused by, usually, human herpes virus 7, HHV7, can be caused by HHV6, the latter which causes roseola. That's high yield also for you, Assimile. I'm not going to go there. I want to stay focused. But this is interesting because you will actually, when you learn about the herpes viridae HHV1, which is your HSV1, all the way through HHV8, which it, which the latter is Kaposi sarcoma-like virus, okay, causes uh, Kaposi sarcoma, you will sometimes hear that HHV7 doesn't cause anything, okay, that it's a placeholder virus, which is actual bullshit because it causes pityriasis rosea, and that's known. Okay, so I don't know where that was conceived of. If you if you come across a resource that tells you HHV7 is a placeholder, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, it causes pityriasis rosea, and the US really wants you to know that. So the answer here is virus. Okay, it's self-limiting. The rash will usually be about one to eight weeks, and about 25% of the time it can be described as very pruritic. It's self-limiting. And that means it'll go away on its own. You don't need to treat it. That's another answer, okay? They'll show you this rash, say, what's the treatment? Answer, just supportive care, no treatment necessary. You can use calamine lotion. You can uh, treat the pruritus, but you're not going to give steroids. Wrong answer, okay? You're not going to give antibiotics. You're not going to do topical azoles. This is not uh, tinea corporis, which is ringworm. Um, that can be confusing. So if you see, if you were to see... Uh, a pinkish ellipse, let's say, or a scaly looking uh, circular and annular ring-like area on the forearm. And there's that's all they show you. It's a zoomed up annular um, appearing lesion on the forearm. That's tinea corporis. That's ringworm. You're not going to see a surrounding maculopapular rash. That would be topical clotrimazole or myconazole, okay? But this is pityriasis rosea. You need to know the spot diagnosis. So answer uh, HHV7, it's virus here. Autoimmune distractor, I mean, the and has rheumatoid arthritis, that's notable, but this is not any type of rash that we would expect with rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, uh, psoriasis, you can get different types. Um, so that's a consideration. But if you know this image, which is high yield, you say, oh, like it's a distractor. This is just pityriasis rosea, it's virus. Uh, this isn't psoriasis, nothing like that. And and the other answer is, you know, bacterium, fungus, helminth, parasite, just all wrong. Okay, so um, this is very targeted, easy, concise, valuable, high yield point for you. Okay, obviously going to make more questions. So if you liked this, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.